Tiger Telescope. <laughs> Terrific for looking at things which are just a wee bit far away. As long as there's nothing in the way. <laughs> the bigger the telescope, the further it can see. But the universe is a very big place. Excuse me, it's very dark out here. And if we relied just on what we could see out there, we'd be getting only part of the picture, so to speak. Oh, I see. That's where radio telescopes come in. Like this one at Parks. It's not looking. It's sort of listening. You see, the whole universe is pulsing with radio energy. <laughs> no! Not that sort of radio. Radio energy given off by stars and a whole lot of other objects in space. Radio energy which needs special receivers because it's incredibly weak. At Parks, these weak signals from far away are collected and amplified so they can be measured and analysed. Oh, and by the way, one of the other big advantages of radio telescopes is that you can use them night and day. But who on earth would be interested in radio energy from space, you might ask? Who on earth would be interested in radio energy from space? Astronomers, actually. Oh. It can tell them heaps about what's out there, like the shape of our galaxy, how fast it's rotating, the size of quasars, molecular clouds in space. What about UFOs? It's got nothing to do with UFOs and little green men. Oh. The telescope's so good at its job, it's working round the clock. And there's a waiting list to use it. Come on, come on, can I have a go now? Australian astronomers share the telescope with visiting scientists. They're dying to work here. When you go to a show, you pick the best seat you can afford. It gives the best view. Overseas astronomers come to parks because it's one of the best places on Earth for looking at the Milky Way, where a lot of the action is. Parks has worked with lots of interesting people on lots of interesting jobs. Along the way, the surface of the dish has been upgraded to make it even more versatile. And the receiving equipment has been replaced with the latest state-of-the-art technology. After all, if you're going to play the game, you've got to keep up with the times. A lot of things have changed since 1961, you know. This is the control room, where the amplified radio signals are sent for analysis. There aren't any guided tours here. There just isn't room. Oh! What does this button do? Hey. Besides, you might touch something you shouldn't. It only takes a few taps, and the astronomer directs a thousand tons of dish to the next part of the sky he wants to observe and all with an accuracy of a minute fraction of a degree. Uh, just like driving the family car. Well, not exactly. It actually has a super sophisticated guidance system to steer the dish. Ah, sort of power steering. Well, yes, I suppose you could refer to it as being similar to power steering. And if you're impressed by team driving like this, You'll be amazed at what a team of telescopes can do. With heaps of ingenuity and some sneaky tricks, the Parks dish can be coordinated with seven other dishes across the countryside to all focus at the same point in the sky. Together, they act like a giant 300 kilometre wide telescope even more sensitive to radio waves from far, far away. This team effort is collectively called 
the Australia Telescope. And it was put together as a big bicentennial present for Australia in 1988. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Bicentennial Australia. Is there anything the Parkes Radio Telescope can't do? Not much. Oh, it's really moving. Oh, come on. It doesn't actually move that fast. All right, we've speeded it up a little bit just for the purpose of the demonstration. <laughs> do anything interesting at work today, dear? Oh, nothing much. Uh, we did find a quasar over 20,000 million light years away. Uh, well, that was just before lunch. So, oh, and after lunch, darling, you... Well, you think how weak you'd be if you'd just travelled that far. You can see why the telescope needs to catch as much of the signal as possible and then amplify it a million, million times. Once it's measured and recorded, all the astronomer has to do is work out what it means. Thank you.